So if change is inevitable, why do we resist it so much? I mean, if change is really just an altering of the status quo, then why is it so difficult? Well, Peter Senge said, it's not that we hate change, it's that people resist being changed. Now that is a big difference because what does that tell you? It tells you that change has everything to do with human emotion. People don't always go through change very well. And as organizational leaders, it's important for us to understand that and recognize that and be able to manage through that. If change is just an altering of the status quo, then why do we spend so much time talking about it? Why do we see some of the things happen in the workplace? Why do we see uh, change efforts that go on and on and on and on? Well, I love this quote by Marilyn Ferguson, where she said, it's not really that we hate change or that we are so in love with the old ways. It's that place in the middle that we fear. It's the, the swinging between trapezes. It's Linus when his blanket is in the dryer. There's just nothing to hang on to. And it's a, it's a given. I mean, it is what's going to happen. Don't ever go in to a change project without paying attention to the human impact of change and what that's going to mean for your people. So it stands to reason that if we want to lead a successful change effort, it's going to depend on a few things. It's going to depend on good communication. And that's not just you dispensing information. It's you listening and taking in and paying attention to what's going on around you. It's going to require that we manage expectations, that you share what you can, but you don't overpromise and you don't paint too grim of a picture. And then finally, it requires an awareness that there's going to be a wide range of emotions that go along with this change. So there's really no difference if we're talking about organizational change or we're talking about personal change because it impacts all of us and it impacts us all slightly different. The hope is that we move from change to transition. Well, what's the difference between change and transition? Because transition is not a given. People can stay stuck in that change cycle forever and never make it over to the other side. So what does change mean? Well, change is usually an external event. Something has been thrust upon you. You probably had no input, no say in the matter. Whereas transition is an internal process. It's a reorienting of ourselves to what the new is. It's something that we're a little bit more in control of. So what does transition look like then? Well, basically there's three stages to transition. The first stage is the old, saying goodbye to the old. That's the moving away from what we knew before, before we can even begin to grasp that there might be something new coming. In the middle is what we call that neutral zone. Maybe it's the fallow ground, you know, that, that middle. It's the space between the trapezes, right? Where we cannot even begin to conceive of something new, but we know that the old is gone. And then that final stage is the new beginning. And this is where we begin to see the new normal take shape. We begin to understand it a little bit more. But as organizational leaders, we're concerned with what do our people look like during these stages. What kind of behaviors might indicate to us what stage they're in? So during that first stage, the new stage, pretty much everybody's in the same boat. Nobody knows what's going on. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of denial. You know, have you seen that in your folks? This is not going to happen. This is the dumbest thing I ever heard of. There's no way they're going to pull this off. So I don't really care. But then you go into that second phase, into that neutral phase, and now you start to see behavior showing up that's associated with these emotions. You see a lot of stress on people, a lot of confusion. Maybe people start missing work. They're taking sick days. But you also might begin to see people beginning to do a little bit of brainstorming, a little creativity emerging. So there's two paths that happen there. Remember I told you not everyone's going to make it out of change and into transition. This is where you begin to see those two paths diverge. This is where you can really begin to do some good work with people. And then as they move into that, that third stage, that new, now you start to see excitement 
you start to see more energy in your people. And you might even begin to see a little bit of impatience. Come on, this is taking too long, you guys, let's go. Where's the rest of you? How come you haven't grasped this yet? This is where things really, really begin to happen. And this is where your people can become the biggest advocate for change. They will become your biggest evangelists across the, the organization about change. And you want to use them in that way. But now remember, as organizational leaders, this is change that you're going through as well. So especially imagine that you were not a part of this idea or you don't agree with this idea. How are you going to lead your folks through it? You're the leader, remember? You can't get down in the pit and start complaining with them. So this is going to require that you really use some good listening skills. So if you think about listening in terms of three levels, going down a little bit deeper each time, at level one, you're really not listening. You're just, they're bringing issues to you, they're bringing questions, they're bringing problems to you, and you're just kind of waiting for them to shut up so you can move on, right? It's very defensive posture. And if we're not careful when we're listening to people, we begin to imprint on them our own biases, our own thoughts, our own perceptions of what's going on. If you go a little bit deeper down to what we call level two listening, now you're beginning to listen through the words. You're trying to hear for what's not being said. And you're trying to understand a little bit more about where are they coming from? What might be their perspective here? And it's pretty important that I pay attention. But then the deepest level of listening, level three listening, is where we are totally listening for what is not being said. We're watching behavior. We have completely removed our own perception, our own biases, and our own lens, and we are simply listening to them. And this is where relationship is built, and relationship helps move people from change to transition a lot faster. So, where are you in leading your folks? Where is your uh, emotional level? Are you moving into that leadership role or are you sort of stuck still in that first phase? I can't believe this has happened. It's important that we move our folks through change to transition, that we model that way for them. Because at that point, transition starts to look a lot more like transformation. And that's where the real magic happens.